Hello and welcome to another jungle tutorial and the first of our season 9 non-champion guides. In this video I want to focus on some of the best impact jungle routes you can use to gain XP, gold and ganking leads over the enemy jungler and team. This builds directly onto the original jungle routes video I did in the mid season, all of which are still good and viable routes. So if you haven't seen that and you're looking for a simple introduction to jungle pathing, watching that before this would be best. In this update, the routes will be more complex with a greater ability to adapt as well as counter. By this stage, if you have watched high MMR players in recent months, you will have no doubt have seen some of these clears in action, but hopefully with some detailed examples and choices, you can begin to implement them into your own games with a better understanding. These simple routes from the previous video all still work and are sometimes the only option for certain champions, so don't view these as the only way to clear. Finally, we will close out the video with some reminders on how to react and read the enemy jungle clear to protect yourself as well as deny them, especially in losing matchups. The benefit to these routes with more options is that they are popular due to the way XP works in the jungle, and the mid-season changes saw regular clears require 4 camps instead of 3 in order to gain level 3, and thus reduce the early jungle impact. The original response to this was to have very strong level 2 junglers who could gank even sooner, take a buff and go gank a lane, which is still of course an option. But with these new adaptable option based clears and a growing popularity of vertical jungling, which I will explain, junglers have found ways to be efficient with XP gains while influencing the enemy jungle and lanes without necessarily needing to fight all the time, which is great for strong level 2 duelists like Zin and Camille. So let's start with the most prominent of these clears. Of course, you could have started this clear at your Raptors without a leash if possible, but due to the nerf to the spawn time of Raptors with this patch, that is less likely to happen, as well as the fact that a leash is better in terms of timing and also helps you achieve the goal of the clear much quicker. So for this clear, you should start red as you will have enough mana to sustain through the first part of the game, unless you are exceedingly mana hungry while also giving yourself that HP regen and fighting potential should you need it. You can do the basic safe and XP efficient clear as you see on screen and as I did a few weeks ago on stream. Red, Krugs, Raptors, determine which side scuttle you want to take and then onto your blue side. Before the red even spawns though, you want to be watching your jungle entrances and also ask your team to ward what's called the pixel bush, which is the bush in the middle of the river on each side of mid lane. This will let you know where the enemy jungle paths early in order to take a scuttle and then you can react accordingly. This is especially important if they take conventional pathing and aren't so much concerned with the route you're doing. This also gives you the safety of taking a scuttle on the other side without worrying about fighting a level 2 fight if you don't want to. Now, should the enemy not show up where you do have a pixel ward bush, in the case that yours is the only ward down, you can take solace in the fact that no information is still good information. If the enemy jungler doesn't show, it's most probably that they are on the other side of the map. So within this basic example though, there are already a multitude of options and decisions we have to make that we can use to stem off of this clear to gain advantages in a different way. So we're going to look at an Evelyn example and then a Kindred example whereby we achieve the goal of a clear while also reacting to information on the map and using the flexibility within it to gain a lead over the enemy jungler, even if very slightly. So first we go from red into Krugs again and as always you should be looking at the map especially if your team has given you some vision coverage. And while I don't really want to smite the red, my leash was so bad, so I kind of have to, but overall it does come out in the wash equally. However, you would like to save your smite for the ancient Krug in an ideal situation. And in this scenario, we see the enemy jungler walking over a ward in the bottom side of the river. I can quickly tap tab just to see his CS and it shows four. That means he's simply done his red and going to do the bottom side scuttle. And the versatility of the clear here will let me react to the information and take scuttle before raptors should I be able to do so. Now in this situation it's not so much experience I'm worried about but timing because I'm assuming at this stage he's going to take my scuttle and then go on and take my blue buff. Which means I leave my Krugs a little too soon, the aggro resets and it's not worth wasting time taking it. Ideally, please be careful about this, kite them correctly so that you don't lose it and you don't lose too much time either. So I move on to take the scuttle on the top side, but Udyr again shows and he doesn't have my blue buff. He also begins pathing towards his raptor side, which means he may even be directly heading towards the blue buff and the top side scuttle. This means I'm not going to have time to take that blue buff, especially seeing as I didn't get my level 3 because of my mismanagement of the Krug camp. Lissandra has a top side lane priority which means if they collapse on me I will die. So in this situation I simply adapt and move on to my topside raptors. And in the kindred example coming up you will see the kindred actually go and take the blue buff instead of having to retreat back into their jungle. Now in this case the adaptability has been nice. I take my raptors, I get my level 3 and I can move on to my blue side jungle. I should already have been level 3 after the scuttle but it doesn't really factor in too much because I simply reacted to the information on the map and the ability for this clear to be versatile means that I wasn't fully committed to the blue just yet and I had time to retract my 
decision and head back into the full side clear. Now, once I'm onto the blue side, I know Udyr isn't there. I know that bottom side Scuttle isn't there. I can simply go from Wolves to Blue to Gromp. And then this is where the clear has an additional bonus. Because I know Udyr would have gone to the top side of his map now, based upon the ward placed by Yasuo, which was really good, I can then move into his jungle to see if he's taken his Raptors. Of course he has. I'm floating just in case a gank is possible in the mid lane, because that's what you want to do. You want to look for that gank, especially if you take the Scuttle before you do your blue buff. But because his Raptors are down and he's definitely not on the side of the map, I move on down to his Krug. Pay attention to the minion waves, of course. You don't want to walk into the Krug pit when you don't have a map scaling ability, when the minions are pathing in the lane because you will be spotted. You're trying to avoid detection in the situation. I have left the ward by his raptor so we can see when he does come down again. I take the Krugs and right on time, here comes Udyr. Now I wanted to do a gank on the bottom lane if possible. But because we saw him, we don't necessarily want to commit just yet because that will leave us in a position to be counter ganked. And if things go badly, well, the Udyr could be easily fed. So I simply decide to wait in the river bush and I only use my W once he is fully committed to the gank with his E. We get the full charm off, we burn his flash, Jinx uses her heal to get him out safely, and that's a successful counter gank all stemming from the adaptability of the clear that I showed you a few minutes ago. Now, of course, I can retreat back to base, loop on over to my Krogs and Raptors again, and be impressed position to take the top side scuttle and my red buff, get level 6, and then look to impact the map again. Now what happens if you don't have as much information and you need to simply rely on the overall behavior of the map? And we'll see what I mean by that. So in this situation, the Kindra does red, does the Krugs, smites the Krugs again. Now because they knew that the bottom side did not leash because they showed up to lane immediately, that means the Graves on the other team started on the red side. And we can see him in the mini screen now, so you have an idea of what he's doing while we focus on the Kindred. And because they knew the enemy bottom lane didn't have to leash, it's it's highly likely they placed a ward into the tribush on the bottom side, which of course from Graves' perspective you can see that they did. This means that Kindred can take a longer path to the Scuttle Crab, but fortunately for them know that the Graves is highly likely to be on the top side. Kindred does have the option of scaling over the Dragon Pit wall, but if Graves is there because he's taking a more Scuttle Crab Kindred denial route, then that could be risky to have your Q on cooldown instead of being fully mobile. So Kindred simply takes a longer path around, places a ward which could be placed better to give more vision of the enemy jungle as I mentioned in my vision guide. Nonetheless, it does give a bit of protection and Kindred can freely take the Scuttle. And because they did red Krugs into Scuttle, they hit level 3 and can now push them down to the bottom lane. And the bottom lane has a false sense of security because they think that Tribush Ward would have given them a lot of protection. Whereas in fact, Kindred was aware of this and took smart pathing, got level 3. And if you're ganking as Kindred and the enemy laner flashes before you've unleashed your full combo with W and E, well, basically, you know that's a guaranteed kill. And they also pick one up on the Thresh. Now at this stage, this is when we can introduce vertical jungling. If you were to imagine an artificial line dividing the map from the mid lane with one side into another, vertical jungling is when instead of taking your whole side of the map, say blue side or red side, instead you will have the bottom side of the map or the top side of the map to yourself. Basically exchanging one half of your jungle and in turn taking one half of their jungle. That means that the top and bottom lanes need to be aware of the enemy jungler and their jungler's pathing so as to protect themselves accordingly. Now in this situation, Graves hasn't shown up in the river yet, which means Kindred knows because they ganked bottom lane level 3 and so quickly, Graves is highly likely to go take their blue buff and Grump, so Kindred returns in kind. The difference here is that the Kindred made the first move with the gank and thus the Graves tower dive on the top side while a good counter move and achieving the same sort of thing means the Kindred can also afford to take the Wolves and then retreat back into their jungle for the second round of the Raptors and the Krugs, giving them a huge experience advantage. And Kindred, understanding everything that just unfolded, knows that they can afford to head straight to the bottom side once again and grab that Scuttle Crab and be in position to counter jungle gank and apply pressure 1v1 or on lanes because they have that experience and gold advantage, as well as the fact that they understand what vertical jungling is. Now, that's a lot of time spent on one particular clear, and naturally you might have already noticed throughout this whole time that there is the risk you simply lose one side of your map without being able to vertical jungle and thus you get put behind. Now, the way that's done is usually by this clear, which is a single target good focus clear and we saw this happen in the Rengar vs Camille game I uploaded earlier this week. The idea here is that you go from your red buff to your blue buff, you have the option to do Gromp then Scuttle or Scuttle then Gromp. It's because your champion is more of a duelist and focused on the single target camps to get them down quickly so you can have an impact on the map as soon as possible. In Camille's case this is of course much more necessary than in other junglers like Zinn who can do other forms of clears as well. Now in the Rengar vs Camille example, the Rengar 
Unfortunately, used his ward to hop over the Krugs and get those quickly because he wanted to secure the bottom side scuttle as soon as possible. However, the Camille was already there and had anticipated such a move and thus was in prime position to kill him when he was not really expecting her to be there as most people would expect the Camille to either do the red into blue into Grump or to do the red into top side scuttle into a gank and then maybe even vertically jungle into the Rengar's blue. So she called his bluff with a much more quickly executed clear that punishes you for making decisions without the proper amount of information or respect towards the enemy jungle's dueling ability. Now in Rengar's case, or if you're another jungler's case where you don't want to run into the Camille and you want to make the most intelligent decision you can, simply doing the red into Krugs into Raptors like this brand does is the way to get the experience in gold while being safe, in addition to the fact that the topside ward provided information that Camille hadn't shown up. Now if you're playing a Zin and Camille and you want to take that red buff, get the scuttle or gank really early, you're most likely going to show in one of those wards that are placed in the early game. In this case, a Camille doesn't gank top, doesn't gank mid, and doesn't show on the scuttle side ward. This gives Brand a lot of hope that she is in fact going from red to blue to grump to the bottom side scuttle, and so he just avoids a part of the map entirely. From doing his red side, he can take that scuttle and then do his blue buff. Or as he intelligently chooses to apply some ganking pressure on the top lane, as well as taking Camille's Krugs because he knows she's never going to take those first thing, especially right after red. So with that steal of a camp, he's able to fall back into his blue side jungle and secure those safely. And Camille shows the power of her clear in this situation by taking those camps, getting level 3 and then ganking on the mid lane. Yes, it wasn't executed properly and she does die in the end, but the goal is the same. You take those single target camps in a scuttle and you look to gank if you haven't done so already. And now very quickly, we want to talk about the final clear, which is something we've mentioned before and something I've talked about quite a lot. And that's once again, starting on your red buff. As I said in the beginning, there is an inherent advantage and safety in starting with that red buff if you run into enemy junglers or want to gank, especially if you want to gank early. And the blue buff clears all work, they're all in the previous video, they're just much more safe or if you're extremely, extremely mana hungry. Now the goal here is the same as with the other clear, you want to try and get some sort of a level advantage, get pressure on the map, whether by counter jungling or ganking, and you want to do it early. Naturally, this is all dependent on your jungler and what particular order of the clears you like to take, but the idea is that you go from your red to your raptors to the opposite side scuttle. You can of course go from red to wolves to scuttle if your champion isn't able to take the raptors efficiently early game. Remember at this stage you should always be reacting to which scuttle you can take based upon the information on the map, but for now we'll assume you go to the opposite side scuttle and secure that successfully. From here your options are as follows, fall back into your blue side jungle and take that, especially if you want to be safe. You want to counter jungle, take the raptors and the krugs from the enemy, which is most useful if the enemy jungler isn't able to take AoE camps and thus you are at a huge advantage knowing they probably aren't going to take your krugs and raptors while you can take theirs. And finally, you can also look to gank. And knowing that you've done red, wolves, or raptors in a scuttle means you're very close to level 3 and sometimes waiting to use abilities as minions die in the mid lane while you're ganking can give you that level up in the middle of a gank and give the enemy laner a false sense of security. So that's much more simple, we have talked about it and you will see it in a lot of my videos. In the Zyra ones, I don't even take a second camp, I just go straight from the red to the opposite side scuttle and from there you can level 2 gank if you have taken E second. The main thing from all these clears is to be aware of the following. Get those wards down on the scuttle crabs early in the game, ask your team to do so, react and take scuttles when they do show up on the one side of the map if you don't want to fight them, or if you do want to fight them, go ahead, rotate over it, as long as it's an efficient form of pathing. The whole goal of these clears is to take your camps on spawn and quickly so you have much more level advantages over the enemy jungler who might be farming and waffling in a way that really isn't conducive to impacting the map in the way that you are. Also be ready to react to level 2 ganks. Not every jungler is aware of these clears or does them. Sometimes they just go a bit ham. They might go from red to top lane gank where you just expect it like this Camille does. Well, that means I can secure the bottom side crab. I can take their blue buff and always pay attention to their pathing over wards or in lanes. Click on the map to see if they've taken your blue buff. In this case, the Kindred is going very aggressive very early knowing that they can counter Kane in these early phases, but they haven't taken the blue buff, they know they've shown on the top in the mid lane, that means it's highly likely I've taken the blue buff and the bottom side crab. This also puts me in prime position to gank in the bottom lane, pick myself up a triple, and know that I can head straight to my blue side jungle, fully aware that the Kindred hasn't even taken that. So the Kindred is at a huge disadvantage, and when you're Kane 3-0 this early with this experience advantage, and understanding how to vertical jungle and take your Krugs and Raptors and other camps efficiently, well, you should be able to easily win the game. So yes, this can be quite convoluted at certain points, a lot of information to digest. I hope the graphics and the examples can give you an idea of the power of these particular impacted jungle roots in Season 9. With Raptors being pushed back in spawn, they will become even stronger. Understanding which champions can pull those off and how you want to path in accordance with your matchup is the most important for your success in the jungle in Season 9. 
Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and comment if you enjoyed this video and learned something. It really does help push the video across YouTube, which in turn helps the channel. Please consider joining, which is basically like Twitch subbing to support the channel officially. Subscribe for more Season 9 League of Legends videos coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.